7. Easter is upon us and boy, it's uh, certainly going to be a different way to celebrate Easter than we're used to. It doesn't mean that we can't celebrate. The meaning is still the same. Make sure you spread the love. Spread heaps and heaps of love. But whatever you do, make sure you keep the Easter eggs to yourself. Share the Easter spirit. You keep the eggs to yourself. Share the Easter spirit. And share the love. And don't share my chocolates. Remember, we're going to get through this. We're going to come through this. We are all in this together. You are not in this alone. Stay safe, Australia. Take good care of yourselves. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This morning, a good Friday to stay put. The message from leaders trying to contain coronavirus. Temperature checks at the markets and church services now being broadcast. How the crisis has changed this Easter. And Boris Johnson moved out of intensive care as the economic toll is laid bare in the United States. This is 7 News with Sally Bowery. Good morning. Leaders have been telling us all week that this Easter would be critical in keeping coronavirus contained, urging us all to stay put, avoid church services and travel. Globally, COVID-19 hit another milestone. Nearly 1.6 million people are now known to have contracted it. Deaths are now approaching 100,000. Here in Australia, 52 people have died, with 6,121 cases. Of those, almost half of the patients have now recovered. Well, let's go straight to Taylor Aiken, who's in Canberra for us this morning. Good morning to you, Taylor. Now, the Prime Minister is leading calls for people to stay put. Tell, take us through what he's been saying. Good morning, Sally. Well, we're being told that this may be the most crucial weekend in the fight against coronavirus. Prime Minister Scott Morrison used his annual Easter message to tell people to stay at home, saying this Easter long weekend will be like nothing we have seen before, with social gatherings largely restricted, even banned in some states. Coronavirus means this Easter will be different and we will be staying at home. And it's important because we cannot undo the, the tremendous progress we have made together in recent times. So this is uh, we are staying at home. Don't travel. Don't go away. The laws differ depending on what state you are from. In New South Wales and Victoria, social visits are prohibited. In Queensland, Tasmania and the ACT, each household is only allowed two additional guests, but social distancing rules do apply. Families are exempt from two-person gatherings in WA, while in South Australia and the Northern Tem Territory, gatherings are limited to just 10 people. The nation's top medical officers saying this weekend will be critical to ensure we keep flattening that curve. Sally. OK, thank you very much. Taylor Aiken there for us. And police will be out in force across the country enforcing strict measures to stop people travelling this Easter weekend. Officers will be targeting roads, making sure everyone's staying out of the usual holiday hotspots. They'll be told to return home uh, and if they don't they'll be subject to a thousand dollar fine for contravening a, uh, a health order. Helicopters and licence plate recognition software are being used to enforce the measures. Families across Australia are preparing for a very different Easter with strict coronavirus measures in place. Churches are finding ways to deliver services and mass virtually, offering messages of hope in these tough times. People will draw a lot of comfort from Good Friday and Easter this year. Uh, people are feeling uh, alone and isolated. They're worried about jobs, they're worried about finances. Choosing to say yes to hope and to say no to despair and Jesus himself on his death and resurrection gives us the way, the truth and the life to be able to embrace the hope that truly deep down in our beings we hunger for and thirst for. And we're crossing live now to Miley Hogan who's at St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney. Hello to you Miley. With churches closed, what's happening there today? Good morning, Sal. Well, it will be an unfamiliar Easter for many churchgoers this morning. The doors to St Mary's Cathedral are locked. There was even a police presence out the front earlier reminding people that they will not be able to go in this year. The coronavirus pandemic has seen a ban on public gatherings, so worshippers will not be able to gather here or at any other church to commemorate one of the most significant weeks on the church calendar. But they will be able to participate from home. Churches right across the country will live stream 
their services online through YouTube, social media and even their own websites. Some will be televised. Channel 7 will broadcast live the 3 p.m. mass from St Mary's Cathedral. The Catholic Archbishop here acknowledging that these are strange times but still a holy occasion and while they cannot be together physically, the live broadcast will allow them to come together spiritually on this Good Friday. Sal? Yeah, but certainly is a very different Easter. OK, thanks, Smiley. And a reminder for everyone that from 3pm, the Good Friday service from St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney will be broadcast across the Seven Network. The Easter Sunday service will also be right on our screens from 10.30am. For many people, Good Friday means seafood lunches and the normally very busy Sydney fish market is open today. However, with some very strict measures put in place to keep people safe. Serena Adeloro is outside. Hello to you, Serena. What kind of restrictions are being enforced there today? Good morning to you, Sal. Well, police are directing a, a steady flow of traffic around Sydney's famous fish markets, trying to ensure everyone is adhering to those social distancing measures. But it's quite the challenge, given this is renowned to be one of the busiest places in the country on Good Friday. But customers are having their temperatures checked as they walk through the door. The fish markets are open from 5 a.m to 5 p.m. today, but the number of people inside is being strictly limited. They're trying to avoid that usual crowd crush. And Serena, in an unusual move, some supermarkets are also opening today. Can you tell us where that is? They are, Sally. For the first time, Coles is open in New South Wales, the ACT and the Northern Territory from 11am to 5pm, while Woolworths is open in New South Wales and the ACT from 11am to 5pm. All Audi stores are closed and, and stores everywhere else in the country are closed. But in New South Wales, local businesses will be allowed to trade. So pubs, clubs, restaurants and cafes will be allowed to sell takeaway uh, hopefully the extra day helps them. They've been doing it really tough, Sal. Yes, yeah, certainly. OK, thank you very much, Serena. Well, the South Australian Premier says he has no plans to relax lockdown laws despite the rate of infection slowing. Yesterday, just one new case was identified. We can't be complacent. That's why this Easter we're just urging everybody to stay at home, don't go away, make sure that we can look after each other through this very difficult time. Three people have died in the state and six people are currently in intensive care. New South Wales Arts Minister Don Harwin has been fined for breaching social distancing rules, but that hasn't stopped the calls to, for him to quit. The 55-year-old MP was caught living at his Central Coast holiday house, almost 100 kilometres from his Sydney home. He's apologised and will be forced to pay $1,000. It's also been revealed he's been hosting a young former Liberal Party candidate at his house despite a directive for everyone to stay home. As the United States moves to its predicted coronavirus apex this weekend, the toll it's taking on the country's workers is stark. Millions more Americans are filing for unemployment benefits. From New York, here's Ashley Mullaney. The economic toll of strict social distancing measures have been laid bare again with more record unemployment figures out of the US. Another 6.6 .6 million Americans joined the queue for benefits, bringing the total number of job losses in three weeks to almost 17 million. Across the nation, planes, hotel rooms, shopping centres sit empty, with almost every sector of the economy hemorrhaging jobs. The fear being Washington's $2 trillion rescue package won't hit bank accounts quickly enough. The crisis playing out at welfare offices as the Trump administration grapples with how to keep the public safe and reopen the economy. America recorded almost 2,000 deaths yesterday from coronavirus, 799 in New York State alone. The governor saying the situation is so dire he's now calling in funeral directors from around the country. It's gotten to the point, frankly, that uh, we're going to go to bring in additional funeral directors to deal with the uh, number of people who have passed. If you ever told me that as governor I would have to take these actions, uh, I couldn't even contemplate where we are now. And to put all of this in perspective, I live through 9-11. There's encouraging evidence New York is flattening the curve and slowing the spread, but the number of deaths isn't expected to peak until this weekend. 
Ashley Mullaney there. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been moved out of intensive care. He'll continue his treatment in hospital as the UK continues its battle with the heightening coronavirus crisis. Hugh Whitfeld is in London. After spending four nights in St Thomas's here in London and three nights in the ICU, Boris Johnson, it seems, is beginning his road to recovery. Downing Street releasing a statement saying the Prime Minister has been moved from intensive care back to the ward where he will receive close monitoring during the early phase of his recovery. He is in extremely good spirits and no doubt there is extreme relief among his colleagues in government, many of whom were quite shocked when they heard news that Boris Johnson had been put into intensive care. He does though remain in hospital of course and it is likely that his recovery will take some weeks before of course he can return to full time work. That news came through about 45 minutes before we saw these uplifting scenes right across Britain. Millions of people, whether it be on Westminster Bridge here in central London, on balconies, front doorsteps, on the streets, right across the country, even uh, at this apartment block that is just across the road uh, from St Thomas's, where Boris Johnson remains on the ward, applauding those half a million health workers across Britain who are working to fight off the uh, coronavirus threat. They have a big task, though. In the last 24 hours, 881 people have been killed by the virus here in Britain. That brings the national death toll to just shy of 8,000. And while ever that death toll continues to rise at such a rate and the rate of infection remains relatively high, this country will remain in a, quite a severe lockdown for the foreseeable future, including right throughout the Easter weekend. Thank you, Hugh. Next in 7 News, the border bus. Just what was one man trying to smuggle into Queensland? And the three men on their way to isolation on the space station. Coronavirus. Gathering evidence as part of a criminal investigation. Dressed Chernobyl style. In the race to respond, 7 News is the one news service separating facts from fear. You've hidden him for two days. The one place keeping you totally informed. 13 COVID hotspots across the state. Your definitive source. This is an Easter like we've never seen before. Stay home or face the consequences. Stay at home. Turn to 7 News. The Melody. It sleeps up to nine. Well, sort of. Makes the perfect hiding spot. And also happens to be a very comfortable queen-size bed. Find your fantastic in-store or online today. When unexpected guests arrive, don't panic. Use Airwick plugins infused with essential oils. Just plug it in to neutralize smells for freshness that lasts up to 100 days. Come in. Airwick plugins. Coronavirus is changing the way we live, work and communicate. Changes can be hard, so it's vital to take care of ourselves and others. Prioritising your mental health is important. To help, there are some things you can do, like eating well, keeping active, talking with family, friends and neighbours via phone or video calls, and making a new daily routine. Together, we can help stop the spread and stay healthy. Visit australia.gov.au to learn more. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Want to know whether you can get car finance? You need to know what your borrowing power is. And you can. Jump onto auscar.com.au, click on free credit score and fill in your details. We'll instantly send you your credit score. Know your borrowing power with Auscar's free credit score. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. Don't let this great offer pass you by. Get paid the best tow price on all Exactors, Quinellas, Trifectas, First Fours and Quaddies every Saturday in Melbourne and Sydney this Autumn Carnival. Bet easy. Raise your game. Because sometimes it's more than just growing pains. Pooper offers an online program to help you manage your mental well-being. Pooper. Because life happens. Call today. Osteoarthritis causes inflammation in the soft tissue between your joints, which can feel like a burning pain. Nurofen helps to reduce the inflammation and relieve osteoarthritis flare-up pain for up to eight hours. Nurofen, also in double strength. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, now.
It's not just drivers being stopped at Queensland's border, but drugs as well. Police have seized nearly 100 kilograms of cannabis after stopping a Ford Ranger ute carrying a trailer trying to enter from the state of New South Wales. A 31-year-old man was arrested and charged. He was also issued with a $1,300 fine for breaching coronavirus lockdown restrictions. Stranded Australians have boarded a plane home from Los Angeles this morning as a new raft of mercy flights begin. The federal government is subsidising both Qantas and Virgin to bring travellers home. Initially I was going to stay, but then when we heard about the mercy flights, we decided to come back home. Stuck in an apartment with three other people in New York. The hospitals are overrun. They're putting up field hospitals in Central Park. Passengers do have to pay for their seats on flights. Easter long weekend is usually an extremely busy time for travel here in Australia, but this year it is a different story. Virgin Australia has been forced to cut all but one return domestic flight a day as a result of travel restrictions. David Woywood has more. In what's normally a very busy time of the day for Virgin, well, I can tell you that things are deathly quiet inside their domestic terminals this morning after the airline announced it would be scrapping all of its domestic commercial flights except for one flight between Melbourne and Sydney each day. Now, the airline says it was forced into making this decision because of that severe drop in passenger numbers due to all of those travel restrictions. All its other domestic flights will now be suspended until at least June 15. It isn't the only airline that's been forced to take this type of decision. Qantas has also been forced into changing its schedule because of a drop in passenger numbers. Qantas is obviously in a better position, but I can promise you no airline in this world can survive a prolonged coronavirus shutdown. Now, it's not just our major airlines that are hurting at the moment, but also our airports. And overnight, the Gold Coast Airport announced that it would be closing its doors. It could no longer financially justify operating in this climate. Thanks, David. Australia's ambassador to Indonesia will be evacuated from the country because of the coronavirus pandemic. Gary Quinlan will leave Jakarta tomorrow, ordered home by the federal government. The 69-year-old has served as ambassador for more than two years. He will remain ambassador working remotely. Two cosmonauts and a and NASA astronaut are now on board the International Space Captain Station after blasting off overnight. Their Soyuz rocket launched from Kazakhstan with little fanfare. Non-essential personnel were barred from the site. The crew themselves had been in isolation for three months prior to liftoff. Next in 7 News Sport with Jim Wilson, including the NRL's ambitious restart date next month. And determined not to miss out, football fans in Belarus find a creative way to support their team. The Good Friday Service, the historic broadcast from St Mary's Cathedral. 7 News takes you there, today from 3pm. Wreck of Lamb Reinvented. Fast Ed's simple secret to add massive flavour. Really, really straightforward. New Better Homes, tonight. Feel safe with the range of screen doors from Doors Plus. Decorative styles, security screens and Guardian 2-in-1. An entry and screen door. Supply delivered and installed. Visit a showroom to see the screen door range today. Doors Plus, no fuss. With GIO, you can receive 12 months free roadside assistance when you take out a new GIO comprehensive car insurance policy. It's just one of the many ways you can save with GIO. Call 13 10 10 today. You know with GIO. At Spotlight, Easter's what you make it. Decorate it, celebrate it and create it for less. With 40% off all fabrics by the meter, 50% off singer sewing machines and overlocker and 30% off all motor yarn. Shop online now and in store tomorrow. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. Your dream home can slip through your fingers without the right plan. But with home loan know-how from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, we'll help you take the right steps to make your dream home possible. Walk like a Ram and talk to us today. Rams, greater together. One of my favourite things about Bed Easy is all of the perks. 
like watching every Sydney race live, so you can watch all the action from the Sydney Autumn Racing Carnival anywhere, anytime. Bet easy, raise your game. At Harvey Norman, our spacious stores are open this Easter with our team practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Shop for fridges, freezers, washers, air purifiers, laptops, Wi-Fi, headphones, home office accessories, mattresses and sofa beds. Until Easter Monday only, take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card. Visit us in store or shop online from home with both click and collect and delivery available at Harvey Norman. Wishing you all a happy and safe Easter. Me forever, carefully taking your special forever mum vitamins, and you created me. I love you forever, mum, and I love you forever, mum. Head to Macca's fast, contact free drive through if you need a little comfort and get two hash browns for just two dollars all day, or a classic hamburger for only a dollar fifty. For your Macca's run, contact free will be here. Good morning, everyone. Raiders captain Jared Croker is pleading with footy fans to stay home this weekend if they want the NRL season to resume. Rugby League power brokers are aiming for an ambitious May 28 restart to the season, but that could change if there is a spike in the virus infection rate. Exact details for the season are still to be sorted out, but if all goes to plan, full contact training will begin within a month. Everyone gets knocked down from time to time. Uh, and you may have two choices. Uh, you either give up or you get up. So we, we've decided to get up. Our stakeholders are pulling together. Um, the, May 28 is a challenging timeline, but it's something that we believe we can work to. Wayne Pearce there on Sunrise this morning and some exciting news for the Pearce family. Wayne son and Newcastle captain Mitch Pearce has announced his engagement to partner Kristen on social media. Congratulations, Mitchell and Kristen. Melbourne continues to prepare its players for an unlikely May 4 return to club training. Demon skipper Max Gorn has made sure his teammates feel the love this Easter. I think his mum's baked up a, a few items, a few cookies for guys for Easter. <laughs> um, he's got a book for everyone. The Max Gorn special pack for Easter. <laughs> the AFL won't make a decision on a possible restart to the season until the end of April. Rugby Australia Chief Executive Raylene Castle will match the 65% pay cut she is asking players to cop. Castle had already agreed to a 50% cut, but yesterday revealed she was taking another 15% off her $815,000 annual salary. Rugby Australia remains confident an agreement over player cuts will be finalised this weekend. Australia's two-match series in Bangladesh, scheduled for June, has officially been postponed. The Aussies tour was slated to count for points in the new World Test Championship, with the inaugural final planned for June next year. Overseas UFC President Dana White's plan to charge ahead despite the global health crisis has been shut down, with all UFC events postponed indefinitely. Earlier in the week, White declared he had locked in a location for the next two months to stage fights and was close to sealing a deal to stage the fights on a private island. Super Netball will consider bringing teams together to play off in a World Cup style format as a last resort to complete the 2020 season. All teams would travel to a single location and play a tournament style with multiple matches within a short period of time. The eight team national competition has been delayed until at least the end of June and a range of scenarios are being considered. English football bosses will attempt to pull off a whopping 433 games in just 56 days in an attempt to save the Premier League. Clubs are now scheduling to restart behind closed doors in June with players to resume training on May 16. Still playing through the pandemic is the Belarusian Cup. I know Sal's been sweating on this. And one Belarus club has gone to crazy lengths to include their members. In a move being described as ingenious and insane, the club offered fans, Sal, the opportunity to have their face, wait for it, put on a mannequin. Mm. Oh, wow. Good idea. A little bit stiff, that yeah. man there, but he'll loosen up. Crazy times. More sport coming your way, everyone, <laughs> at four and six. Bring out the arts and craft. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> okay. Next in Seven's Morning News, we'll have the National Weather Forecast with David Brown. Every night... The latest answers all your critical questions. Weeks of doubt for millions of school students has come to an end. The experts. We haven't had the unrestricted growth that we see in other countries. What you need to know. Australia in an incredible position. Police have started their investigation. Get the latest from 7 News every night. 
Hi folks, older Aussies and those living with disability are finding it really tough to even get the basics. So IGA set up a home delivery service for locals in need to get their essentials. Register online so IGA can come to you. Oh, little Bella's home with a newfound friend. Luckily, with Pino Clean Laundry Sanitizer, it doesn't matter where that's been. Because unlike detergent alone, which doesn't get rid of all germs, it removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria. It's not clean unless it's Pino Clean. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important as well. If you've got sensitive teeth, you should be looking for something to help with the sensitivity, but you should also be thinking about, do I need to look after my gums? Using the new Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health when used twice a day, every day. I think it's fantastic to have a dual action toothpaste. Two benefits with the one toothpaste, what a great idea. If your detergent isn't strong enough to remove stains without pre-rinsing, you're wasting up to 40 litres of water. Try new Finish Quantum Ultimate Pro. So powerful, you don't need to pre-rinse. It scrubs away dried on stains, degreases, and provides the ultimate shine. Stop the pre-rinse. Choose new Finish Quantum Ultimate Pro. There's only one thing to look for. Choose a super fund with this symbol. We're all in this together. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, no. Get ready. Ready? Set, set. Jump to the rhythm as hard as you can go. Ready, set, get ready. Special occasions should be celebrated, but Tim suffers heartburn and Tom suffers indigestion, so they use Gaviscon Dual Action, which like all antacids neutralizes stomach acid, but also forms a protective barrier against reflux. Try Gaviscon Dual Action. Pay less every day at the good guys. This higher washer only 445. This 40 inch TV only 248. 20% off this Viali dishwasher, $150 off this Samsung phone. Loads more online in our catalogue, only at the good guys. This weather report brought to you by The Good Guys. Contactless home delivery now available. Pay less every day at The Good Guys. Let's get a check of the weather forecast now with 7 News meteorologist David Brown. How's it looking, Brownie? Yes, good morning, Sally. It's showery along eastern parts of the uh, seaboard today. And a cold outbreak, well, that's lining up the southern states. In fact, this is it. It arrives tomorrow. Only 15 degrees expected in Melbourne. Improving, though, as we head across the uh, Easter break. Let's go to the weather wall now. We're expecting a shower or two in Brisbane today. Warm, forecast top, 27 degrees. In Sydney, we've got light rain falling at the moment. There is a risk of a thunderstorm around mid-afternoon. Today's high, 22 degrees. Melbourne, it's fine, although cloud is building up. Should reach a high of around 23 degrees. And as we pop into Adelaide, fine, mostly cloudy conditions, also a high of around 23 degrees. We can now track patchy rain and thunderstorms sweeping across eastern parts of the nation at the moment. This is the cold front uh, crossing the bite we're keeping an eye on. As it moves through, it will unleash that burst of cold air that will impact the southern states across the weekend. Snow is expected to fall across the Alpine peaks. But for the major centres tomorrow in Sydney, it will be, well, dry, sunny and becoming rather windy. Dry westerly change on the way, 26 degrees ahead of that. For Melbourne, cold and showery, as you saw earlier, only 15 degrees. But in sharp contrast, on the other side of the high that's been pumping, well, it's expected to pump that cold air up into the southern states, it's going to draw very hot air from the interior towards the southwest corner of WA. That's why Perth is expecting a sunny top of 37 degrees tomorrow. So that's the latest weather. And, of course, there'll be more details coming your way at 4 o'clock, Sally. OK, thanks for that, Brownie. See you then. And that is 7 News to Now. We'll keep you up to date throughout the day. For New South Wales viewers, we are standing by for an update from the Health Minister. For everyone else, thanks for your company. Have a good day.
Good afternoon. As we mentioned, we are standing by for a live update from the New South Wales Health Minister, Brad Hazard, on the latest on the coronavirus crisis. We are also expecting to get an update on case numbers uh, and any possible deaths that have happened here in the state over the last 24 hours. Let's bring in Chris Marnow, who is standing by for us at the news conference in St Leonard's. Hello to you, Chris. Now, police are expected to be there too. We are certainly going to be getting that message again that we are not to be out and about over the Easter break. That's right, Sally. We are expecting the health minister shortly and senior health officials to update us on the fight against COVID-19. We were, of course, told yesterday that there were 39 new cases of, inf of infection in New South Wales. That was a continuation of the reduction of new cases, bringing the total to 2,773 overall. We also know nationally there's also a continuation of that falling of new cases, but unfortunately 52 deaths now nationally after the passing away of an 80-year-old man in Victoria. As you mentioned, the Easter weekend is being described as crucial in this campaign, described by the Federal Health Minister as the, the most important period we have faced. Now, there will be, for, in terms of social isolation, there will be strict enforcement of that in key holiday spots over the weekend. Police are saying there'll be police patrols, there'll be helicopters, there'll be use of number plate scanning technology to try and ensure that people do the right thing. Of course, locations in Sydney that normally are overwhelmingly popular over the Easter weekend, like the Sydney fish markets, normally they have 40,000 visitors there. Today, Good Friday, it's just 400 people at a time using sanitizers, keeping isolated to follow those rules also in locations like that. Sydney beaches are closed. Popular walkways are also closed. The weather is certainly helping. It's overcast, it's cool, so it may be not so bad for people to stay indoors this weekend. The Premier this week indicated that these social isolation rules uh, could stay in place until a vaccine is found. But she also hinted there was a possibility that restrictions could be eased on some facilities as early as next month. Also today we have some Australians coming in on uh, being re repatriated from overseas on mercy flights, uh, flights leaving Los Angeles, for instance, arriving later tonight, Sally. And obviously, uh, as you just mentioned before, over this Easter period, we are seeing uh, different rules across different states. But for New South Wales, uh, the message is clear. No family gatherings, no one is allowed to be out and about if they don't absolutely have to. So let's just recap uh, some of those essential things that people are allowed to be out for and what they're not. Well, they're, they're allowed to be out for, for work purposes if they if that is the case over, over a long weekend. Uh, they're allowed to be out for, for, for exercise, of course, just in, in individuals or pairs. Uh, so it's all very restricted. Ideally, they stay indoors. Uh, they enjoy the Easter long, long weekend as a family group. Uh, they may have to use uh, technology, of course, to, mm. to speak to their relatives, to their, to their loved ones. But the approach is very much to stay indoors. Uh, the weekend is described by both the federal and state governments as a crucial one in clamping down as much as possible on this disease and trying to continue the success that we've seen so far in reducing the rate of these new infections. That's going to be very difficult to achieve, but of course crucial in terms of preventing that, that feared impact on our medical services. So OK, while we wait for the Health Minister Brad Hazard to begin his conference today, let's update you on the latest figures as they stand right now. Globally, COVID-19 has hit another milestone. Nearly 1.6 million people are now known to have contracted it. Deaths are now approaching 100,000 here in Australia. 52 people have died. There are 6,121 cases. Of those, there are 2,987 who have recovered. We'll take you now live to Health Minister Brad I'm Hazard. This morning with, uh, obviously, Dr Chant, our Chief Health Officer, um, and, uh, and also uh, Deputy, Deputy Commissioner Warboys uh, from the New South Wales Police, um, and uh, Jared Hayes from the Health Services Union. First of all, I'd just like to update where we've got to in the last 24 hours up until 8 p.m. last night. We have had a, uh, a very small, a modest increase 
Uh, the day before, of course, over the 24-hour period, we had a remarkable number of only 39 new cases. Uh, in the last 24 hours, we've seen a very modest increase to 49 cases, so 49 new cases. I'll just remind everybody that that still reflects a great effort by our community. Uh, back on the 24th of March, we had got up to 211. And on the 30th of March, uh, my recollection is it was about uh, uh, 212. So I want to thank the community for doing what you're doing because uh, the efforts that you're making are actually keeping us all safe. Um, the test numbers, I also want to thank our health uh, colleagues, uh, pathology and doctors across the state. Uh, the day before we had 3,906 uh, tests done, but that was up in the last 24 hours to 8 p.m. to 4,444 tests. Uh, so that's, that's fantastic. Um, of the uh, 2,822 confirmed cases now across New South Wales, uh, 211 cases are currently in our New South Wales hospitals. Of those 211 cases, I can confirm to you that uh, 29, 29 of those people are, are in intensive care units. We've talked a lot about ventilation and obviously once you have to be ventilated it's a much more serious level of uh, your presence in the uh, intensive care unit. Uh, of the 29 people in the ICUs in our hospitals, 23 are ventilated. One is on ECMO. Uh, ECMO, of course, uh, is uh, a higher level of, uh, of need for the patient. Uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, effectively you're making sure your organs are being oxygenated. Um, to date, up to 8pm last night, there were 22 deaths in New South Wales. Uh, this number of deaths includes one gentleman, a 69-year-old gentleman, um, who passed away, sadly, at uh, John Hunter Hospital. And again, not just numbers, these are people, people whose families would be missing them today. And I just want to say, on behalf of all of the community uh, of New South Wales and on behalf of uh, the government and uh, all involved, um, our sincerest sympathies are with your family. Uh, it won't be an easy time for the family of that 69-year-old, as it hasn't been with the previous 21, year, 21 people. Just reminding you, at 8pm uh, last night, there are 6,103 cases confirmed across Australia. Um, and uh, I'll ask Dr Chant in a minute to make any additional comments that she wishes to make. Just some other, some other matters. Yesterday, um, I uh, signed an order, but there was also a regulation in concert with that that uh, um, made it very clear that the New South Wales government and I believe the New South Wales community um, will not put up, will not put up with uh, spitting or coughing on our frontline health workers, uh, whether it's cleaners, doctors, nurses, whatever it be, you're going to cop a $5,000 fine and I'll ask Deputy Commissioner Warboys to comment on that in a moment. Um, it includes Border Force officers who are working so closely with us. Um, it is absolutely disgusting that anybody could think it's okay to cough or spit on a, uh, a health worker or any of the other workers. So it's $5,000. Easter, a reminder, don't travel. And parking, today it's free for all health workers. <clears throat> Sorry about that, my asthma's playing up again. I'll just ask Dr Chan to say a few words. Thank you. I'd just like to echo the appreciation that the Minister indicated in thanking the community for coming forward to testing. It's been pleasing to see that we've had continue to see an increase in testing numbers. And my message to the community is to please, um, our services are open over the Easter period and I would urge you to continue to access those services. I'd also like to message to the community that our services are safe and, and available, so it's very important that you don't neglect any other underlying chronic diseases or if you develop symptoms that, need, that you need to access urgent care, please continue to do so. Thank you. Commissioner. Thank you, uh, Dr Chant. Uh, here we are at the start of Easter. Uh, 
right around this state, police are reporting that there's uh, uh, a good deal of um, consideration and compliance uh, with uh, those requests around not travelling, uh, social distancing. Uh, but it's also disappointing in the same time to say that in the last 24 hours, nearly 50 people have been issued infringement notices for $1,000. Those people who um, just fail to get the severity of the situation that we face ourselves uh, in these last uh, few months and days. Uh, and of course, of course, these people um, need to be sent a very clear message that it won't be tolerated. It won't be tolerated by the police or the community. And if you choose to uh, go against what, um, what uh, most people in the community think is a reasonable uh, consideration with the, the situation that we're faced with COVID-19, police will take action. Uh, I also know that police have been very considerate in lots of other uh, aspects of their duties, uh, providing information to people and warning uh, people about their behaviour and consequences. Uh, and this has also gone a long way towards seeing people return home or, in fact, uh, just simply um, uh, making that travel in their local area uh, a very short uh, space of time and, and getting back home where they should be. Uh, the minister also alluded uh, to the fact that uh, from today, uh, police will be able to issue a ten, uh, sorry, a $5,000 fine, $5,000 uh, for uh, spitting, coughing uh, on an emergency service worker or someone going about their duties in a, in a hospital or a pharmacy. Uh, this um, is a substantial uh, fine. It's something that the police can write on the spot and hand to a person, and it should, um, uh, it should be um, something that uh, is not taken lightly. And I have no doubt that, um, uh, that over the coming days um, we will have to issue some of these fines. Uh, if you had have said uh, some time ago when this uh, uh, crisis started that people would go out and cough and spit on emergency service workers and people working in pharmacies and hospitals, um, I would have thought that was, that was remote. Uh, but we already have seen this sort of activity and this action uh, taken by the government and the fact that today police can write those $5,000 fines uh, should send a very clear message that we're taking this very seriously. Uh, I must say that um, right across country New South Wales and indeed in and around the urban area here, police have been vigilant around people towing caravans, people uh, with uh, trailers and quad bikes and camping gear, uh, people with surfboards, uh, in and around the border towns where it's quite easy to see Queensland vehicles, Victorian vehicles moving into the state for holiday activities. Um, the police have already uh, been significant in terms of their interaction with these people and making sure that uh, where it's appropriate that they go back home uh, where they need to be. Um, with that, I will hand over Good to Jeremy. Uh, thank you, and thanks for the ability to be here today. Um, I want to reinforce uh, what, um, what the uh, minister and, and the police have said in relation to the spitting. Uh, health workers, whether you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a cleaner, uh, you're a pathologist, um, a security officer, they've got their own anxieties at the moment. And yesterday, a paramedic raised it very clearly with us. Uh, he said, we're working incredibly hard at the moment to keep everybody safe. We're watching our colleagues overseas die. That's what they're thinking about, and the fact of the matter is they want to make everybody safe. So if anybody out there thinks it's funny, thinks it's of some kind of, um, of, of uh, right of passage to be either, either spit at a health worker or cough on them to make them feel vulnerable, you're a coward, and that's all you are. Uh, this society, New South Wales, won't tolerate it. The union movement won't tolerate it. And we will work with the government, as we have been over the past two or three months, to get, that, get, get things right. That announcement yesterday was one of the best announcements we've seen for a long time. This government is working very hard and we're going to work hand in glove with them to make sure the people in New South Wales are safe. Thanks. Thanks very much, Jared. So it's a very clear message to the community that uh, we're all working together. As you can see, the Health Services Union is uh, very supportive of efforts the government's made, but I'm very supportive of the Health Services Union and their efforts to talk to councils right across the state, to ask councils to come on board and support the efforts that the state government's made. The announcement today about uh, free parking for all of our health uh, workers uh, in our car parks is just part of the equation. We're certainly uh, very supportive of the Health Services Union's efforts to reach out to councils 
across the state to ask them to, uh, during this crisis, uh, make uh, special arrangements around uh, hospital areas. It obviously can be worked through locally with councils as to how they might do that, but at the end of the day, um, health workers uh, are the very best friends that we could ever have during this crisis. So hopefully councils will find ways to ensure that uh, health workers, the people that uh, will look after us uh, if and when we're uh, subject to this, uh, this terrible virus, will uh, have free parking so they can do their work without having to fear or worry about uh, the consequences of where their vehicle is. Now, happy to, sorry, Chris, happy to take questions and you can address questions to any one of the, uh, the folks who are here today. Chris. OK, that was New South Wales Health Minister there, Brad Hazard. Just updating some of those latest figures. There have been 49 new cases of COVID-19 in the state. That's a modest rise up from 39, which we saw yesterday. 211 patients are currently in hospital. 29 of those are in ICU. That is the latest figures that we've just received from New South Wales Health. But, of course, we'll have full details in 7 News at 4 o'clock and at 6. Bye for now. A reveal like no other. This is the night the Gold Coast penthouse is complete. We're here to stay. And for these teams, the stakes couldn't be higher. I am so determined to smash this competition. Don't break the glass. Don't break the glass. Everyone will need to impress. I reckon if we wrote lavish in diamonds, it would have looked less lavish than this. Because this is their final chance to get their dream home. Good job, Mumsy. Yeah.